Hello, this is James Cox with the Martial Arts Lifestyle. This is our episode number 12, and I'm very、um, honored today to have a special guest with us. This is Grandmaster Patrick McDaniel. So, McDaniel is my original martial arts instructor.、Uh, man, we're talking like 36 years ago when I was 15 years old and walked into、uh, with some good friends of mine in the neighborhood. Michael and Stephanie Benavides took me to、uh, Sears Park Recreation Center on, on the north side of Abilene. and Uh, this is what kind of has molded and changed my life and the thousands of students that I've been able to train and teach as well, all because of this man right here. So, we want to kind of dive into some of his knowledge and wisdom and get a little bit of story and ask some valuable questions. So, you guys, I, I feel you're going to get a lot out of this. You know, again, when, when I started the martial arts and what it's done for me and for those that I've been able to influence as well was because of, of this.、Um, First time I stepped into those doors, you know, as, as a young kid. But let, let's go ahead and、uh, ask Mr. McDaniel to kind of introduce himself and tell us a little bit of, of his own story. Well, first off, I'm,、uh, I'm very、uh, honored to be a part of this and very proud of your progress.、Uh, when, you, uh, when you start a program like this,、uh, I was quite a young cat myself, so you don't really know where it's going to go.、Uh, you know, you just have a You have a dream, you have a desire to do something, and you, you feel like you're going to be good at it, so you try it, and、uh, you have these stepping stones. And of course, you're one of those stepping stones, and you hope that it works out for the best. And in, in your situation, and in a few other situations, it did. It worked out quite well. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you guys,、I'm、very proud of you guys.、Uh, this was uh, uh, all I knew is I wanted to do something. Big, you know,、uh, because I was a phenomenal,、uh, imaginative young boy. I wanted to be a superhero,、mm-hmm. okay? I wanted to be <clears throat> a, a famous singer. I wanted to be a movie actor, you know? Anything that was famous and, and people knew you and you did well, I wanted, to, I wanted to do that. I wanted to invent stuff. I wanted to, to design cars, anything. I had a phenomenal imagination. Well, no matter what it was. So I spent a lot of time、uh, watching TV, of course, you know, because, you know, the, the, the cowboy movies and the fighting scenes. And, and you were in that、uh, Bruce Lee era. As well, well, right? It, see, that's what really hit it because, you know, I was watching cowboy movies and, and then,、uh, then the Green Hornet came up and Green Hornet came up and I was like, well, that fighting is much different than what I see on the cowboy movies. So that's the fighting I wanted to do. I wanted to do the fighting I saw、uh, Cato doing, which Cato turned out to, to be Bruce Lee, you know, because we didn't know who he was then. But all I knew is that was a, that was a very, very unique、uh, style of fighting, and that's what I wanted to do. So that dream was a dream. My father was military, so we kind of traveled around a bit, and I told him that's what I wanted to do. He said, Well, yeah, we can, we can work that out somehow, you know. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out while we were living in California on the, on the Navy bases.、Uh, but when I got back to my hometown in Abilene, Texas,、uh, there was karate school you know, over on Mockingbird. I don't know if you remember that、uh, back in the day. And I tried to get into that karate school and couldn't figure out how to get in there. You know, it, was, it was a real strange building. I guess you had to be a club member or something. To, you know, but a young boy, I couldn't get in that building.、Uh, I was a volunteer worker for the, for the recreation department. So I'm down at Woodson Recreation Center, and、uh, the center director tells me that there are going to be some guys coming in to teach karate. And so I, you know, I lit up. I was like, all right, teach karate. All right, so I was,、uh, I was a camp leader with these little kids, and I figured, well, when the guy comes in to teach karate, I'm going to watch everything he does and try to learn for myself. Well, it turns out, as I've watched for like the third day, he asked me to join in. You know, he said, Well, you're watching all the time. Why don't you join in? And we're talking about,、uh, at the time, it was Sifu George Jackson, you know, of course, you know, great grandmaster now.、Um, I said, Well, you know, I'm, I'm working here. I don't think I'd be able to do it.、Uh, the center director overheard me say that, and she said, I, c- I can do anything the kids were doing. So there it is. That's where I got started in Kajikimbo. So it found me.、Uh, I, didn't, I didn't find Kajikimbo. Kajikimbo found me. I couldn't get into the Taekwondo school because that's what it was, the Taekwondo school. So I couldn't get into that school. And then Kajikimbo comes. And、uh, I think that's probably the best thing that、uh, could have found me、right. is because of、uh, <laughs> the, the creative nature of Kajikimbo. You know, when I 
when I heard these stories about, uh, at the time we, we referred to him as Professor Adriano Imperato. See Joe now, because he's founder of the system. But at the time he was a professor. And when I heard the story that he developed this self-defense system, you know, by using five other standard styles, that just gave me an idea. As, I'm, as, as 14 and 15 year old kid, I was already developing a system, you know? So in, in teaching you guys, uh, you start off with, a, with, with a, a blueprint from what my instructors gave me, what George Jackson gave me. I spent a little time with George Jackson. Military guys, they don't stay around long. So the next military guy was Paul Jackson, no relation. Uh, so I received this blueprint from these guys on, on the, the fundamentals of, of teaching karate, right? And with this blueprint, you uh, use your imagination and you, you, you take it further, you take it further. Of course, as a young guy, you, you try to emulate your instructor. And I, I found out that I, I could only go so far with that. Mm -hmm. I, you had to I, become yourself. Yeah, because I'm not Paul Jackson, right, you right. know? So I tried to emulate Paul Jackson and you can only go so far with that. So I had to figure out how to be myself. Now I did a lot of reading because I was really interested in uh, finding out more about how these instructors are making these students stand out. So I read Masuyama, and I read Ed Parker, I read Bruce Lee, uh, and I read uh, the fundamentals of Taekwondo. I read all these different, these different uh, instructors, these, these well-known masters, these books that were written like in the 60s. You know, these guys were, these guys were real. They were on mm -hmm. point, uh, they studied hard, they trained hard, they had their philosophies. So philosophies that I built the system on uh, from the blueprint of Kajikimbo came from reading from other instructors as well, you know, because I wanted to be good for you guys, you know. Uh, I wanted you to believe in me, mm -hmm. you know, so that you can develop yourself. And I did. I think I developed uh, a, a noble concept mm -hmm. of how to make this Kajikimbo system work. So uh, I didn't want to be a bad guy. I, I wanted to be this fun-loving, have-a-good-time guy that I think I am. But still, if it comes time to have to whoop somebody's butt because they're mistreating us or our family, then we should be able to do it, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So, uh, and, and I'm proud of you guys. You're really making the system stand out. Yeah, we sure had a, we sure had a group, man, that, that you know, we, we call it extended family in martial arts, but exactly. dude, I, that was real family, you know? Really, there was no extension, really. but that, that group of 10 or so of us, you right, know, it was right. a small organization, but it was tight and we trained hard and we were all kids you know, um, still today are some of my best friends. Exactly. You know, exactly. From, from way back then. I think you were kind of ahead of a lot of time with uh, the thinking and the things you did. And I was the same boat where I was just trying to mimic you, you know. Right. Um, you know, you became my father figure. I mean, I was with a, a single mom, a youngest of seven. And I right. remember, you know, because anytime I did something, my mom would, would, would call uh, Grandmaster McDaniel to, to tell because <laughs> if I wasn't listening to her, I wasn't doing the right things or whatever. Now she called him Fusi at the time. It, <laughs> it was Sifu. And seafood, I was more right. scared that he would find out that my mom was calling him Fusi instead of Sifu. <laughs> Say, you better do this or I'm going to call Fusi. <laughs> I was like, Mom, it's Sifu. <laughs> but it did make me straighten up, man. It showed me a better way and, and, and the right things, you know, process, of course. But um, that's that's been the blessing, you know. When um, when I think or try to describe uh, you to other people, just certain words like uh, a certain energy that's hard to put words on, a certain charisma and connection. Some people will compl compliment me with similar things, and I'm always like, man, if you only if you only knew uh, Mr. McDaniel and how he did it when when someone um you know walks in a room and there's just a different aura about them, right? So you, you possess that with some power and some good synergy and, and you're able to kind of bring it out of other people. I think kind of the question is, of course, I'm a product of your work and um, how, are, how do you feel you're able to and do you see that you're able to bring that, that hidden potential and that, that, that charisma out of the students and the people, you know? I mean, do you realize what you have and, and, and how do you bring that out of others? It's a good question. Uh, I didn't realize it. In the beginning, I didn't realize it. Uh, you know, my mother used to tell me when I was a little boy, she said, you're gonna, you're gonna lead something. You're gonna be a leader in something, you know? I'm a little boy, so I'm like, okay, yeah, thanks, mom. And I go out <laughs> and I keep playing, you know? Uh, but kids would come and knock on my door because they wanted to play with me all the time, you know? And I didn't, I didn't ask to say, 
let me lead the group. I didn't ask for that. It, they just kind of looked at mm -hmm. me as being somebody, well, what, did, what do you want to do, you know? And so, Natural anyway. Natural born leader. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and I didn't know that. You know, I just knew that people were interested in wanting to know what Patrick was going to do. So uh, I didn't realize it in the beginning. But uh, I think what I, what I developed is, you know, I'm, I'm going into approaching 49 years of doing martial arts. And I've learned more every year, every year, mm -hmm. every year. You learn more. Um, and I think what I've learned is once you develop the confidence in yourself, right, and what helped my confidence is I would, for example, teach you guys something. Am I really sure that was good? I wasn't sure until you guys did it. Mm -hmm. And once you guys did it, and I was like, wow, that, that actually really worked. It worked. You know right? what I mean? So yeah. I said, I taught these guys this thing, and it works. I remember your first trophy. Mm -hmm. When you came up to me and you said, Sifu, look. And the look on your face. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know? So I'm like, well, congratulations. Well done. So that was for you. But when you walked away, I turned my back and I went, yes. Yeah. So whatever I'm doing works. This guy won a trophy. He's excited. He's happy. You know? And so the confidence in yourself helps you realize that well, when, when I walk through that door, I know what I'm doing. When I walk through that door, these people have to know that what I have to deliver is going to be good for them. Ask me how I know? Well, look at James Cox, mm -hmm. you know, look at Michael Benavides, you know, look at all the, you know, the, the successful people that, are, that have come under my wing. You want to know how I know what I'm doing? You look at my students. Yeah. You know, you look behind me. You look at what these guys are doing. Because I don't really care much that I was a world champion. I don't care much about that. Because I said at an early age, I wanted to do something that would last forever. Mm -hmm. How do you do something that will last forever? I could be a world champion fighter or something. Would that last forever? No, because I'm 62 years old now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be in a world fighting ring. But did I teach somebody something? Mm -hmm. And who I taught is teaching. Yeah, and who they taught. And the That's legacy, lasting the legacy, forever. Right. I want to do something that will last forever. And just having that knowledge gives me confidence to go in and just do what I imagine would be great because it always starts here first. Whatever I imagine, you make that manifest. And when I'm when I'm biting, look, you you are you are more yourself when you're by yourself. So whatever I can put together by myself, right? That's the real you. Because mm -hmm. by yourself, you're just gonna shine. <clears throat> you're gonna flow. You're gonna you're gonna do whatever it is. No mm -hmm. one's watching. No one's judging you. Just do it. Whatever I produce by myself, I come in and I tried it with you guys. And I yeah. try it with my students now. How does this thing work? You guys make it look good, then boom, I know I've produced something well, you know? And the blueprint is always going to be there, the Kajikimbo blueprint. But if you stay in one place, I would not be able to help you guys. Because that, that goes so far, that blueprint, boom, once it's done, it's done. Now, where do I go from this blueprint? Well, it's an art. This is martial arts. It's an art. So if you don't use your imagination and expand that blueprint, then you wouldn't be where you are right now. Because right. what you've done is you've expanded. You know, you've brought other things into the system. Mm -hmm. You've brought other things into the blueprint. I am, am, am more creative. When I get to the end of, of, of K-Drill 10, then I get to the end of Counter 10, then I develop the Ghost Walk, then I develop Dirty Dozen, then I develop uh, Butterfly Strikes, I develop 20, you know, you have to keep this program going, you have to keep it keep going. evolving. You have to, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, you know. So it sounds like when, um, you know, you started, of course, Abilene being an Air Force team, uh, uh, Air Force City, right. you know, it brought a lot of people in with a lot of culture, with martial arts experience, with different things that, that weren't we're not from Abilene. You know, this is a style of Kaju exactly. that was developed from um, uh, Hawaii right. and to end up in this little town. And uh, from George Jackson to Paul Jackson, you, you, you were left a solid enough foundation. Unfortunately, they left, but it kind of sounds like that's fortunate. Now, good thing you were creative enough right. to continue, but because you were left alone, you had no choice. I mean, you had a choice to either just quit and give it up exactly. or you had a choice to kind of keep going. And this wasn't the days of internet there was no check in Facebook to find your instructor. People left. That's and right. They kind of left you behind. And then later on, I was there actually with you. I think it was like 87 when we ran into a, 
uh, you know, the late senior grandmaster Richard Peralta. 85, he, 85, uh, <clears throat> I first met him in 85. Oh, okay. And we actually, we actually connected strongly around 86. Okay, yeah, you yeah. You know, sure and, did. Um, he took you under his wing, you spent the years and learned a lot from him, you know, and, and, until his passing, but, because you were kind of left alone, and then, you know, even when you left here, you know, I guess you could say, I was kind of left alone, right? Right. I was still able to go to see Peralta, because he was three hours away, versus right. you being, you know, 20 hours away, or yeah. whatever, but um, that does force, like that struggle, because it was a struggle, right, for a minute, but it forces the creativity, and, and you know, uh, how, how, how to just persevere and go all in or not, right? Exactly yeah. right. You know, yeah. and you and uh, and you hit the you hit the, the the nail right on the head. Uh, if you are passionate about something, if you are passionate about it, and it is an art structure, and you have no one else to say, okay, very good, do it this way, do it that way. Let's count the numbers. It's your knees, son, she. They're not there anymore. Then what do you do? Yeah. You use your imagination. You know, right. you, you know, you, you, you know, like I said, I read up on people. I read up on Masuyama. You know, I read up on Bruce Lee and Ed Parker. I read up on those guys. You know, those books were available then. Now there are books available on, on Imperato. You know, mm -hmm. you can find out things about him now, but then Kaji Kimbo was still new. Yeah. You I know, remember how happy if went to the bookstore Hastings, we'd see a, a magazine with, yeah, with yeah. the Kaji Kimmel article. I right. still have those. Right. I still have those <laughs> articles we cut up and saved. But that's, right. that's cool. So, I mean, that, that's a lot of legacy and contribution there, but what, what would you say you're kind of like most proud of uh, looking back that, that, that's been your contributions, you know? Because you, you've contributed to martial arts in the world, and a lot right. of that is back to all the military people that you were able exactly. to teach that don't yeah. stay here, and then right. they, they go off to this country or this place and, you know, end up settling there, but they still um, have roots and things that, that you fed them originally. Exactly. You know? Like I said in the beginning, one of the main things that I'm proud of is uh, is watching the students develop, because I'm I'm more of a passionate instructor, right. or, or a passionate teacher, than I am. A, I, I think I did well as a competitor, but that wasn't my goal. Mm. My goal was how well can I teach. So to see you guys develop is is, is a, a very proud moment. Uh, but I can tell you a very personal moment that uh, meant a lot to me. And I'm not sure you were with me at that time. This was like. I'm like 20, 21 years old now. And I go to the Grand Nationals in Oklahoma City. And I, I think even with you guys, whenever I would warm up to compete, I wouldn't be around everybody. I would always kind of find a secret mm -hmm. place to myself. So we're in the Grand Nationals in Oklahoma City and I'm outside in the foyer. And I'm stretching out and running through my kicks, getting, getting prepared to do a, a kata competition. And Chuck Norris walks through the door. Now it's just him and me. You know, because he comes in through a side door. I'm in the foyer. The main lobby has it, the, the activities is where everyone else is, and it's just him and me. And I said, wow, you know, Chuck Norris, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you now because I know once we get inside, I won't be able to get right, to you, right. you know. And Chuck Norris and I, we had a conversation. Now, I'm only 21 years old. Hmm. I'm looking at a guy that I've admired in the movies. Right. That's there with you. Yeah. Right? yeah and yeah. we're having a conversation. I mean, he would ask me questions and I would say things and he was listening to me and even converse back. So when that conversation was over, I'm, I'm, I'm reviewing this conversation. I'm going, I sat and had a conversation with Chuck Norris. <laughs> right. You know, so that made me feel like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm kind of proud of that moment. Yeah, you know, yeah, so personally, yeah. that was pretty, pretty deep for me. Right. You know. Yeah, validation, Definitely. connection like Definitely. that. Yeah. So what do you do nowadays to like, I mean, you, you have that unique uh, creativity, but what do you do to improve yourself? Who do you learn from uh, my and students. continue to grow? My students. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the main thing I learned from my students. Uh, I, I do some, some internet searching, like you mentioned, it wasn't available then, mm -hmm. but I, I search the internet and I find something that really stands out. And... With my imagination, it's really got to be something. There's a lot of junk out there. Yes, right? a lot of junk. So it's got to be something that just pow, that mm -hmm. really pops. So I do some searching and I'll find, you know, one or two things that really pop. And I, I build from that, you know. I'm, yeah, I, I, got, I got you. I yeah. just build from something mm -hmm. that really pops. Uh, I, I attended a seminar with, uh, with, with, with Grandmaster Al DeCascos and 
he taught me a, a drill, you know, where us, a few people that were there, he taught me a drill, and uh, that's some more validation because the drill that he taught me was very similar to drills that I taught you guys years mm -hmm. ago, right, you know, right. and I, and that just well, psh, I'm, I'm on the right track. Like minded, right? Ex exactly. Like mi minded yeah. with with efficiency and results. Exactly. And the martial arts principles in action, but right. from two different people. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, that's cool, man. Oh, Almost 50 years, five decades. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. How, how do you uh, continue and, and, you know, I mean, I've done the same thing. This is all I've done. I, I don't think I've ever burned out, really, because uh, I'll, I'll just change up something. But exactly. exactly. I guess for yourself and then what advice do you have for others on this whole burnout? You know, how have you gone near 50 years and continue to martial out arts without getting burned out, burned out of it? And we see so many other people that do you know, after six months even, after six years, right? So where's this longevity come from and how? what's the secret? You realize that the world changes. You know, you can stay in one place if you want to, then the, the world is gonna run off and leave you. The world changes. So you have to keep your roots in place, but don't be afraid to evolve with the world. If you realize the world is changing, uh, the teaching structure has got to change as well because the kids that I have now were not the kids you guys were. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of change a, a, a teaching structure. What's but so still. different, too? Well, I think, I think the major difference is uh, in the home, there was a different discipline structure at home yeah. in the beginning. Uh, and with the discipline structure at home, kids understood when they went outside you, you uh, get involved with an organization and they're trying to teach you this discipline structure, they have a basic understanding from home. Same thing, it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, both parents have to work now. You know, it's different. You know, there was usually a, a mother at home back in the day that, you know, helped train you and, and teach you, but now everybody's got to work. If, you, if your teenagers are in the house, they got to work too. Everybody's working. You know, so the family structure is not as tight. So when they get outside, they don't know how to behave with that, mm. with that family structure. So I had to change my teaching to get that message across another way because the world is going to change. If you change with the world, within reason, then you can keep creating, and that's what keeps me alive, you know, with different things. Uh, you've done the same thing, yeah. you know, by uh, adding your, the, the different systems that you've uh, personally trained with. So... So it's I, not like you're doing the same thing for 50 years. You're doing something. Not, you're doing the same thing differently. Differently. Right? Exactly with different right. ingredients and exactly additions. Right. Exactly yeah. right. It's a, I have a philosophy. I call it the fish aquarium. You know, when you have a fish, you have a fish tank, a fish aquarium, and you want to you want to change the water, you can't empty all the water. You've got to keep some of the old water in there mm -hmm. or the fish will die. You know, so you empty out a lot of the water. You keep some of the old water. You add new water but you still have that basic foundation. Mm -hmm. So I still use that blueprint and I build on top of it. Yeah. And when the world starts to change and the students come in and uh, their personalities have changed, then I learn to, to be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that keeps me growing, you know. Yeah, yeah, I call it like disguise repetition. So we wanna do the same basic punches, blocks, kicks, cause you know, they're the basics, the fundamentals that work the most, that are the most effective. But you still got to do them a little different. You do. And you people do. aren't as, I mean, I remember our workouts. We trained hard. We right, trained intense. Right, right. it, it was real. You know, I sound like that old man telling people nowadays, back when I did martial arts. Right, right. You know, uphill, in the snow, barefoot, both ways. Right. You know, but it, it was it was a little more uh, rough and tough, man, for it sure. Was. definitely. And now we got to, I guess we got to pad some things. You know, or, yeah, or disguise yeah. it, or, or, or you do. be more patient with it. You do, you and, do. and there's also a difference when, um, when it is your business, you know, as well. I mean, you're, you're running the martial arts exactly. uh, commercial, but right, yeah. So teaching from those days to these days, that's kind of the changes. Um, I mean, what else have you seen from? Do we're in 2022 now? You know, what have you seen? This 50 years you've been doing this. The differences. Right. Um, what else is, is the most noticeable, you know, from the people you teach now to them? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's more necessary to know. Yeah. It's necessary to have this martial arts background. It's, uh, it's important. I'm glad you brought that up because what happens is 
what happens mm. is the world is, is in a position now to where it's important to have martial arts knowledge, whether you want to do it or not, you know? It's essential, right? It is. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's important to have this, this background, to, to know how to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, when somebody approaches you a certain way, it's important to know how to be prepared and ready. Chance favors a prepared mind. So you prepare for this world. When you accept that this yin and yang thing is what balances the way we live, which means, yeah, we're going to go to Six Flags and have a good time, but there's a chance something might pop off negative, mm. you know? So uh, my wife and I went to the, uh, the Christmas lights show the other night. Hundreds of people were having a very good time. They were smiling and laughing and taking pictures. But you know who else was there? The Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. Just in case yeah, right. something pops off wrong. So, yeah. so they're prepared. So it's, it's important to know, to have this martial arts background, to know how to be aware of your surroundings and be prepared if something pops off wrong. I, I bet you can't do that because I do it too. But you, I bet you can't really be in a crowd and not think of the possible things that could go wrong. Maybe maybe see that there's a possible abduction over there. You or have that to. this is somebody that that is just evil, you know, and right. that they to keep you on your own guard, right? Yeah, and, you have you have to. If you because yeah. see, uh, the people in our position, we're, we're martial artists. And what, what I'm saying that because you have someone who, who are, you could be a, a student going to a martial arts class. We're not students going to martial arts classes anymore. We're martial artists. And so with our martial arts minds, no matter where we are, we're martial artists. I'm a father, but I'm a martial artist. Mm -hmm. I'm a brother, but I'm a martial artist. I'm an uncle, you know, but I'm a martial artist. I'm a friend, but I'm a martial artist. So no matter who you are as a person, the years that you've put into the system, you are now a martial artist. Yeah, yeah. So wherever you go, you're a martial artist. The way of life, right? Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. So how important, I mean, and can you be a good martial artist and be a good person, you know? Because that's, that's changed a lot, too, where, you know, we have the whole um, origins of the beginning where it was more internal and it was more, you know, even, even spiritual. Right. So you built a martial arts from the inside out. Right. Right. MMA changed a lot of things where, you know, it's the sport concept. And sometimes it's just uh, more about the, 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 the outside, you know, the physical mm -hmm. aspects. Right. So I guess the question is maybe what's your thoughts on being a good person and being a good martial artist? And I know you've seen all of that yeah. in many different ways. You know, and, and martial arts, how do you grow in both are. ways? You know, I mean, man, we got to get this kick better that it can knock somebody out mm -hmm. if need be. But how do we also grow empathy and kindness and love and, and connection? You know, the mind, body, spirit. Yeah. Who you are is who you are. And uh, martial arts shouldn't change that. You, know, you might change your, your persona uh, like I'm talking to you and I'm talking to anybody who's listening because we're talking about martial arts. This is my passion. This is what I do so I can talk about it. On the outside, I might not have a whole lot to say if you're not interested in the things I'm interested in. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I'm I'm who I am. You know, and if I think I'm I think I'm a, a cool, loving person, I'm a cool, loving person. But I don't want to separate. Well, okay, my martial artist, and and then I'm Patrick. Patrick is a martial artist. Now, if we're going to talk about this thing that I am passionate about, we're going to talk. But if you want to talk about uh, professional football stats. I don't know anything about yeah, that, right, right, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can watch a game and I'm interested in, in seeing who wins, but I'm not so deep into that to where I can tell you where this guy went to college and where he went to high school, mm -hmm. and, you know, but I can talk about martial arts. Yeah, same. You know, yeah. so, but uh, you, don't, you don't separate them. You, you know, you come in as, as, as James Cox. That's what it is. You're James Cox. You're a grandmaster in the martial arts. Now, if you were the, if you were the CEO of a corporation, you're still James Cox, the CEO of a corporation with, you know, uh, a, a, a General Motors or whatever, but you're still James Cox, you know? So I'm Pat McDaniel. Uh, it, it, I, I developed a martial arts concept from the blueprints of Kajukimbo, but I'm still Pat McDaniel. So I still go out and do karaoke and have a good time, you right. know? I go to, to, to Carowinds and Six Flags and ride roller coasters and mm -hmm. I have a good time, you know? I am who I am. But yeah, we yeah. put me in a dojo, and I'm going to make sure that I deliver my message clearly to you, as clear as I possibly can, to make sure that you understand what's going on in this world. You have to accept 
that there's a chance that you might have to survive mm -hmm. in an ugly way, even though you want to have a good time. But you've got to live this life with warm guards, not hot guards. If you, if you got hot guards, you won't enjoy yourself. Yeah. If you got cold guards, you're going to get caught off guard. But warm guards. Warm guards, yeah. 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 Just prepared enough, right? Be prepared yeah, enough. Yeah, but not, not all spastic and crazy. And, right. <laughs> yeah, things like that. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, I've trained with a lot of different people, but it, it still always goes back to, um, you know, to you and everything you've given me and where I am and what I've done. And I, I really appreciate and value that, you know, because I know I wouldn't be here without that. And when I find other people, I've learned a lot of good techniques and stuff, but it's not really what you teach. It's how you teach it. Exactly. And uh, it's hard to find anybody that is as passionate and intense um, as you are as far as getting the message apart, uh, you know, to someone else, right, in the ways that you do that. Um, I know you're really passionate about self-defense, awareness, and the mindset, you know. Like I say, you can do the same drills, but you can just, you can turn up some intensity, and it's not the same drill anymore. Right, right? exactly. You know, how how do you teach that passion, I guess, and then what, what are your tips to, to people to um, just stay safe in general? You know, right. with, the, with that mindset, I guess the question is kind of all about the mindset of what you do. If, if you got to get people to believe. If, if you believe one thing, you have to believe the other side of it because it's, it's good and evil. You know, it's you know, happy times and sad times. You got to believe both sides. And what happens is people will live in a, for an example, they move into a gated community. In that gated community, they're like, well, we're safe. Mm. We're protected. We've got a security guard out there. The, you know, you've got to have a code to get in and and then they have this, uh, this, this kind of false protection thing to where they think they're safe. And they forget about the other side of what makes life life. What makes life life is there's always a negative, positive and negative. That's the balance of the universe. You try to keep too many things on one side, then they're, they're going to have a lapse in the balance. Mm -hmm. So if people understand and, and, and realize and believe that they've got to prepare for that other side, well, then they're going to be passionate about what they're doing. They should be, you know. Uh, if you're trying to learn how to play a saxophone, you might have good days and bad days. Understand that. And don't get discouraged if you're having a bad day. You just get back on the horse, you, you get back on your notes, and you practice that saxophone. Same thing goes on here. The same thing goes on with martial arts. So if you get people to realize how important it is to uh, accept this, and you know what comes from the heart touches the heart. So you bring it from the end. I, I bring my passion out to let them know this is how I feel about it. Why? Because I'm just as human as you are. If I have this passion for it, I don't expect for you to be exactly the way I am, but I need you to understand there's a reason, there's a purpose for you to do this. And if you don't understand it as children, your parents understood it, that's why they signed you up. Right, right. You know, they signed yeah. you up. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, man, that's really kind of what I wanted to ask you. I mean, we can close with anything else that you want to want to um, add in any wisdom. You know, we got all these these future martial artists and these these current ones and ones that want to be here. But sometimes the hardest part is just walking in the doors and getting on the mat, you know. Right. right? And then they end up with the, I should have and I could have regret, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, yeah, anything you want to add on, on again, that wisdom to to the, the current and the future you know, members of, of, of martial arts. Realize that the world is not going to be uh, sunshiny every day. And whatever it is that you want to do to progress, you just, you do it. You know, how do you make something happen? Well, you start. What is the, the journey of a, of a thousand miles start with one step? You just go ahead and do it. So if you say you want to train, then you train. You do it. You don't sit back and think about it forever just and ever it. and ever. You yeah. do it, you know? You might step in and say, okay, this is, this is cool, or it's not. But at least you gave it that shot. Mm -hmm. You know, but you do it. You do it. Just do it. Yeah, you're right. It's like going to a gym. I'm, I'm on, the, my next episode is going to be with my good friend, um, A. Walser, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about that stuff. But how many people sit at home and, and wish, wish they were going to work out? They're going to do it tomorrow. Right, right. Okay. Right? okay. Tomorrow. We'll wait till the new year. We'll wait till the new year. <laughs> uh, I'm going to wait till I get in shape before I go get in shape. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah. I hear it all the time, too. Right. <laughs> all the time, man. All the time. Uh, all right. Well, it was great having you. I'll have you back again. And again, thank you so much it. for everything. So I appreciate <laughs> you. Guys, take care. We'll see you soon.